Let's head back up to this country's capital city here in Ottawa. As promised, we want to get some more information from the federal government about its plans as far as this Russian invasion of Ukraine is concerned. For that, I'll bring in, we have now reached, I think, Rob Oliphant, the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Mr. Oliphant, good to see you. Thank you for making the time. Thank you, Vashi. Uh, yesterday, uh, Deputy Prime Minister Freeland said, I have to be honest with Canadians, there could be some collateral damage in Canada referencing potential future sanctions. What might that collateral damage look like, Mr. Oliphant? I think we can't really speculate on it uh, right now. The reality is that I have never seen Canadians so united, uh, coast to coast to coast, uh, in their resolve and their determination to help Ukraine and the Ukrainian people. Uh, will that bear? Will we bear some cost for that? Absolutely. We don't know what all of that is. We know some of it. Obviously, we have uh, humanitarian aid we are sending. Uh, we are providing loan funds to uh, Ukraine. We are providing lethal and non-lethal uh, aid to them. Uh, military equipment. We are providing humanitarian aid. Uh, we are already spending money. Let's let's be realistic about this. And Canadians, I think, are united coast to coast to coast to say uh, this is money that is spent well because it's. The war is in Ukraine, absolutely, as Russia invades Ukraine, uh, but at the same time, it's a war against the things that Canadians hold dear. Uh, will uh, Moscow um, retaliate? I would expect something will happen. Uh, we have the strongest set of sanctions ever against any country uh, that have ever been leveled. And Canada has been uh, uh, leading the way on that with other countries. And we have uh, uh, put sanctions against individuals, hundreds of individuals. Uh, news uh, today of uh, sanctions coming out on um, executives of energy companies. Um, we have put an embargo on the central bank. Uh, we see what's happening to Russia with their stock market with their, uh, the value of, of their currency, uh, with, with uh, the whole uh, state of the Russian economy. And Minister Jolly has been clear. We will keep acting day after day with sanctions that suffocate the Russian economy until Ukraine and Ukrainians are free uh, from their attacks. Right, Mr. Elephant. And, and maybe I wasn't clear. I, I, I take your point about all the money that's being spent. The cost to Canadians that I was um, asking about is more the, the collateral damage, right? So in the case of of the, the question posed to Minister Freeland was around Russian oligarch uh, Roman Abramovich, who's the biggest sh shareholder in Evraz, which owns metal facilities in uh, Regina, Calgary. It's a big, big company here. Uh, are, are Canadian jobs, for example, at risk, potentially? Like, is that on the table? Uh, every, everything that we do, we recognize. Sanctions take time, and, and uh, I know that there's always um, impatience to get more sanctions out, but every sanction that we do is, is under law. We have three regimes that we can sanction people under, and they're carefully thought out one at a time. Um, do we look at the cost on Canada of those sanctions? Of course, that's considered, but that's not our primary consideration. The primary consideration is, is saving Ukraine and the Ukrainian people by suffocating Russia and its government. That's what we are trying to do. And I think Canadians will understand that. Um, we'll be, Even if they uh, lose their job? And, and uh, with no disrespect, because I, I take your point, Canadians are united in the pushback against what Russia is doing. But, well, but even if they lose their job. I, I would say that the cost to Canada and Canadians and our economy of not doing something is far greater than the cost of these sanctions that we are imposing and will continue to impose. The cost of, of a larger, a world war is huge. The cost uh, if we lose our international rules-based order is, is, is huge. The, the cost to Canadian freedoms is huge if we don't do these things. Will there be costs? I expect something. Uh, can I speculate on exactly what they are? Not at this time. Uh, we'll be monitoring everything as we go. But the reality is, the more we get these um, uh, sanctions out, the faster we're able to cripple that economy, the faster we're able to do that, the, the, we will be able to, to lighten that load. But that's not going to happen anytime soon. These sanctions need to be felt and understood by the Russian people uh, so they understand. We're living in a world of disinformation and misinformation right now. Uh, one of the ways to get to the Russian people is through their economy, through their daily lives. And so they'll reflect on what is happening and put pressure on their own government. So this, this is something that uh, uh, we're taking very seriously. Uh, we recognize uh, just as we've been through a pandemic, 
and different sectors were hurt in the pandemic. Believe me, I believe that this government is a compassionate government, we're a thoughtful government, we're a fair government, and if certain sectors or certain groups are hit uh, strongly, uh, more strongly by, by these sanctions, the government will, will take that into consideration. We've always done that. You can just are you hesitating? look at the pandemic. Is your government hesitating, though, Mr. Oliphant, and pardon the interruption, but to, to sanction Roman Abramovich because of the potential job losses? Has that caused hesitancy to do so. I, I can't comment on that. I'm not in, in the room where the sanctions are determined. I have watched them as they've come out, and we will continue to bring sanctions out. Um, uh, we're not able to give the names of who will be in this next tranche of sanctions, but they are planned and they are careful. Uh, continue, I would say, to all Canadians, watch the sanctions as they roll out later this week, and I think you will be proud of your government for standing very strongly, and this will demand a lot from Canadians. I mean, I think about my parents uh, who told stories of World War II. That's the kind of sacrifice that Canadians may need to make at this point. I think we're ready to do that, but we're also with a government that has an economy that's buoyant. We have a banking system that works. We have uh, uh, the natural resources in Canada that make us wealthy. We have a system that is working, and so our economy will be resilient with a government that has a steady hand at the tiller, like Christa Freeland does. Uh, she obviously has a personal interest in this. We understand that. That's uh, part of who Christy is. But she's the Minister of Finance, and she is a strong Minister of Finance with a strong hand on the on the tiller of the government's economy. Okay, Mr. Oliphant, I, I just have a few minutes, so I do want to get one other. Uh, set of questions in, and, and, it, and it's around the idea of diplomacy. You, you talked about making sure Russians uh, get a clear message, right, that isn't bog, bogged down with disinformation. I've listened to the opposition uh, call on your government to expel the Russian ambassador and your, your government's response to that, which in part has been, if we, you know, if we kick theirs out, they'll kick ours out, then we don't have a chance to get the message that we want to get out to uh, out to Russians. We don't. The, we close any diplomatic channels, and, and that's a bad thing, not a good thing. I'm paraphrasing, but that's what I've that's what I've gathered from the, the conversations, the back and forth that's taken place. So, have there been conversations? Is my question. Are are you know has the minister been talking to the Russian ambassador? Ha, has there been any kind of conversation other than the summoning that took place a little while ago? Is that diplomacy? Is is that happening? There's tremendous diplomatic efforts going on all the time right now. We've been clear that the solution to any uh, conflict is always through conversation and diplomacy, keeping doors open, keeping conversations going, and that's it. And diplomacy is two-way communication. It's listening and speaking. We need an ambassador in Moscow who can both listen and speak. That's very important for us to have eyes and ears that are there understanding what is going on and communicating strong messages to the Kremlin. That is something that we have has a very he, fine ambassador. Has that ambassador. ambassador spoken to the Kremlin, though, since Russia began its invasion? Like, have there, has a conversation taken place? Conversations continue every day diplomatically to ensure that Canada's message is With the conveyed. Kremlin. With the Kremlin. The con conversations continue. That's all I can say at this point. But I'm just asking for a more specific answer because the, the government's defense is that those conversations should be happening. I'm just asking, has a conversation with the Kremlin, a diplomatic conversation occurred? Has the foreign affairs minister spoken to the Russian ambassador here in Canada since the invasion began? Canada's position on all of these issues is clearly communicated regularly to to uh, to Moscow. It is regularly uh, ensuring that that uh, Russia and its government knows Canada's opinion. So we are making sure that those messages are are delivered in appropriate ways at appropriate times. That's what diplomats do, and they find the best ways to do it at the best times possible. Uh, our our minister has been very clear that uh, Minister Jolly wants diplomatic conversations to continue. And as long as they can. Uh, let, let, let's be very clear that everything is always on the table. We're always open to changing situations. Right now, however, that diplomatic conversation is critical, and we will keep doing it in any vehicle that is open to us to be used and to be fruitful for Canada to get its message across. Okay, Mr. Oliphant, I'm out of time. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Rob Oliphant is the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Foreign Affairs. <music> Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.